Hello and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing a beginner's tutorial for face shaving for mature women. If you've considered face shaving, but you're just not sure if it's for you, or if you've decided you want to do face shaving, but you're not quite sure how to begin, this is the perfect video for you. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Cindy. I love to review skincare, hair care, and a little bit of makeup. Definitely consider subscribing, liking, and clicking that notification bell so you don't miss another one of my uploads. Now, why in the world would you shave your face? Why in the world would a woman over 50 shave their face? I'm going to tell you. The first thing is it's going to give your skin a beautiful exfoliation. It's a very deep exfoliation compared to using a chemical exfoliant or just doing a manual scrub. This is a deep exfoliation. It's going to brighten your skin. It's going to smooth out your makeup application. It's going to allow your skincare products to penetrate a little bit more deeply because you're going to be removing those dead keratinocytes that are just ready to slough off. Now, as we know, in our wiser years, our skin doesn't exfoliate as well as it used to or turn over as fast as it used to. So this is gonna give your skin a bit of a jump start. Who might not benefit from face shaving? If you have active acne, you definitely don't wanna shave your face until that's healed up. If you have keratosis pilaris in your cheeks area, again, you have rough and bumpy skin, you wanna get that cleared up before you even consider it because it's just a potential for more irritation. Also, if you have rosacea, I would definitely second guess this because again, it's going to introduce inflammation and irritation. So those are a few people who might not benefit from face shaving. Other considerations that might make you second guess face shaving is if you've done a recent chemical exfoliation treatment or if you've recently been using your retinoids and you notice a little bit of irritation, you might want to back off using your retinoids for three or four days. Let your barrier heal. You never want to do face shaving over a broken barrier because it is a fairly deep treatment of exfoliation. And even after you face shave, you're going to want to use ingredients and products that are going to help repair the barrier of your skin for the first couple days. Some of you also might be nervous because you've heard that your hair can grow back darker if you shave your face or it can grow back thicker and more abundant. I have never heard about that in personal experience or experienced that myself. I think it's a bit of a myth. Now what you might be feeling after you shave your face is the regrowth of the hair that is blunt and it might feel a little bit stubbly. Some of us may have thicker hair, some of us may have more thin Bellis hair. So you want to kind of assess the hair that's on your face before you face shave to see if you'll be able to tolerate that kind of stubble that you'll have for the first couple days. I notice it for the first couple days and then my soft vellus hair just grows back. So it's basically I'm just removing the peach fuzz and the peach fuzz just grows right back. For me personally that takes about a month. So I shave my face about every every month, every six weeks. Everyone might be different. I know people that shave their face every single day. For me, that would be too irritating. So you have to know your skin and know what you want out of face shaving before you begin. You're gonna have the best outcome from face shaving if you take time to set up, make sure you have enough time to complete the treatment and you're not rushing, and you've also watched a demonstration or you know the protocol that you're gonna be using so you don't get in the middle of the treatment and you're unsure what to do. Next, I'm gonna share with you my setup, what products I use, and go through a complete demonstration. If you want the best outcome, especially if you're new to face shaving or dermaplaning, is to get all your supplies ready to go, get them all set up, and also set aside some time, especially if this is one of your first times face shaving, you might be a little bit nervous. You don't wanna rush through this. So make sure you have enough time, set up all your products, and I'm gonna go through each of the products that I use and also put a link to my protocol down below. If you wanna print that out, you certainly can but it's important to kind of prepare ahead of time so you're not rushed. I definitely was nervous the first time I did face shaving at home. The first thing I always do is degrease my skin. Now, sometimes dermaplaning is done with oils. I feel that degreasing the skin is really important because it gives you a closer shave and also helps prevent any nicks and cuts and catch. You may be asking, what in the world is a degreasing cleanser? Well, it's kind of to mop up all the sebum and oils on your face before you start. 
The one that I like to use because I have fairly dry skin is an essay cleanser. So this is the salicylic acid cleanser by CeraVe. I've already cleansed my face, so I'm ready to go. You can also, especially if you have oily skin, use a glycolic cleanser beforehand. What that does is kind of breaks up those keratin bonds, get those, gets those loose skin cells that are right on the top of your skin, ready to slough right off. So step number one is cleansing your face with the proper cleanser. Step number two, I always like to do a red light therapy session afterwards to decrease the inflammation in my skin. Of course, we're doing an exfoliation, in this case, a fairly deep exfoliation. A little bit of red light will help reduce that inflammation so that I can go on with the rest of my skincare without exacerbating the irritation. The next product you wanna make sure you have on hand is a nice hydrating serum. I love Medicaid's vitamin B plus HA's super intense hydrating serum. Another option is the Medicaid peptide serum. This is the one that I'm gonna to use today because I find this more recently to be super hydrating and it's going to be the perfect lightweight serum to rehydrate my skin after dermaplaning. Next, you wanna make sure that you have a nice moisturizer. If it's in the evening, maybe something a little heavier. If you wanna use something replenishing, you can find one of those post-procedure moisturizers. If you're gonna be wearing sunscreen and makeup, then maybe choose a lighter weight moisturizer. My three top picks, one for a replenishing moisturizer is the Calicium Multi-Action Cream. It's especially made for post-procedure. Lightweight daytime moisturizer for me personally is the Dew Instant Angels or the Peptide Night Cream. And if I'm doing this in the evening, I usually reach for the Jordan Samuel Moisture Recovery Cream or the Dermatology, their Instant Repair Balm. Both of these are beautiful for rehydrating the skin, improving your barrier repair. So these are great for evenings. Of course, you always wanna wear sunscreen. I prefer a mineral sunscreen after shaving because it's just less irritating. The one I'm using these days is Kinship, and one of my absolute favorites is the Murad City Defense. Those are the four products you're gonna to wanna to have on hand. All of them should be fragrance-free and essential oil-free so that they don't increase the potential for irritation. So you're gonna to wanna to find a degreasing cleanser for your skin type, a nice moisturizing and hydrating serum, a moisturizer that's suitable also for the time of day. And of course, if you're going out right after, you wanna make sure you have a sunscreen and preferably a mineral sunscreen. Now let's talk about the type of tool that you're actually gonna to use to shave your face. Some people use a women's razor. I don't recommend that. Some people use tinkles. Now I find that I've used them before and the Sephora dermaplaning tool, I've used both of those and I find that they scratch the skin and they don't give that close of an exfoliation. So I don't recommend either of those. My mother-in-law loves the Dermaflash tool. So there are many tools out there. My favorite face shaving tool is the Stack Dermaplaning tool. And it's a good day to demonstrate this for you because I have to replace the blade. It comes with replacement heads and they just snap right on. And I usually replace the blade about every four or five shaves. And I'm gonna show the blade to you it is a scalloped blade, which means it's guarded. And I highly recommend you not using a scalpel. A lot of people buy scalpels off the internet. It is extremely dangerous to face shave with a scalpel. You can have a serious accident. So I'm just gonna say right out, do not use a scalpel for dermaplaning or face shaving. Get a blade that has a guard on it. And that's why I love the stack blade. It has a guard. Of course, it has the potential for giving you cuts and nicks. That's why you're gonna go really slowly. And I'm gonna slowly demonstrate the techniques that I use to avoid any kind of a nick or a cut. It also comes with these smaller blades that you can get in between your eyebrows and around your eyebrows. So you get multiple blades in the kit, plus it's a very safe blade to use as opposed to getting a scalpel. If you're just beginning and you're a little bit nervous, you might consider picking up the Dermaflash tool because it just has less potential for nicks and irritation. It doesn't give quite as close a shave as a blade will, but it's a great beginner tool. So let's get started on my demonstration. You always wanna make sure that you start with a clean blade, that your skin is cleansed. I've already cleansed my skin, so, and it's dry and I'm ready to go. You don't want to dermaplane or face shave on a wet face in this case, especially if you're using a tool like this. So you wanna cleanse with a degreasing cleanser. You want your skin to be dry. I'd like to start in my brow area. I'm gonna hold my skin very taut and I'm gonna come down 
and very slow feather-like strokes at a 45 degree angle. I'm also going to be looking into my mirror. This is probably the only time I'm gonna recommend you use a magnifying mirror because you really want to watch what you're doing, see what you're doing, and pay close attention. So I'm gonna hold my skin taut along my forehead, come down in a 45 degree angle. And however you need to get your skin taut is what you need to do. So I pull up, then if I hit a few brow wrinkles, I pull down. You can see it's removing all the dead skin and you wanna make sure you hold your wispy little hairs out of the way and take your time. You can also use body tape to get the hairs out of your way if you want to. I was out of body tape, so I'm just gonna go very slowly come into your cheek area. I don't have a ton of hair in my cheeks and you don't want to double exfoliate. Try not to go over the same area twice or your skin is gonna get really irritated, especially if you have sensitive skin. Now, if you have a little acne mark, I have a little blemish here, I'm gonna go around that area. In the chin area, be especially careful to pull the skin up over the cheekbone to avoid nicks and cuts. And then when you get to the neck area, pull up and go down. You can also pull down. Again, over the chin area, I'm pulling the skin up and trying not to dermaplane over the, the hard bone of my jawline. And then of course, I always do it over the lip area. Okay, so that's this side completely done. I'm going to do the center of my forehead and I'm not going to switch blades this time. I'm not gonna to get too close to my brow area. I usually don't do between my brows because I just don't have that much hair there. But if you do, you wanna make sure that you switch to the tiny blade. And you can see how much peach fuzz is coming off. I usually dermaplane about once a month and it will depend on how fast the hair on your face grows and just your personal preference, how sensitive your skin is. For me, I tolerate this nice, deep, exfoliating dermaplaning routine about once a month. And again, nice and slow, holding everything taut. You may find that one side is easier to do than the other, so just make sure you're going really slowly. I'm gonna do a quick check in bright light to make sure I got every area. Sometimes I just can't believe how much hair and fuzz comes off. And once I'm done dermaplaning, I always clean my blade with an alcohol wipe, let it dry, and then put it away. The next step is optional. If you have an LED light or mask, I highly recommend doing that to kind of decrease the inflammation. I always use my Mysama Green Robo's Tea, and I'm going to use my panel today because I feel like a panel is a better option right after you've done dermaplaning, just for less irritation. Now, if you don't have a panel, no worries, just use your mask. 
you can just drape your LED red light therapy mask over your face so the pressure just doesn't increase any more irritation. For some of you, your skin might be super hardy and it doesn't matter either way. For me personally, kind of having that against my skin right after dermaplaning is slightly irritating. But today I'm gonna to be using a panel. I was very kindly sent the Mysama panel to trial and I'm going to do a three minute LED red light therapy session. This is a unique panel in that it also has pulse light. I haven't played around with that very much, so I'm just gonna use a red light therapy option for a three minute treatment, and then I'll share with you the next steps in our post-shaving skincare protocol. Done with red light therapy, you can either choose to rinse off the Mysama Green Revoice Tea Serum, but I prefer to leave it on. It's a great antioxidant. And I'm gonna use the peptide serum from Medicaid today to really hydrate my skin. Even a couple layers of this, if your skin soaks it up really quickly because your skin is going to soak up product a lot more readily after you've finished shaving. And I don't have a lot of redness because I was really careful in my cheek area where I tend to get a lot of irritation and going very lightly with my dermaplaning. All right, I'm gonna let that dry for just a second and then I'm gonna come in with the Dew Instant Angels Moisturizer. This is one of my absolute favorite moisturizers, especially for dry, mature skin. It's just so incredibly soothing. Again, you might opt for a nice post-procedure moisturizer. This is the one by Calisum. This is my mother's absolute favorite. It has a conditioned medium with growth factors and exosomes and cytokines. So this is a great option, except I'm out. So I need to get my hands on another bottle of this because it is really great for post-procedure, especially after you've dermaplaned and your skin is really exfoliated and can really absorb the product so well. Another option, especially if you're doing your face shaving in the evening, is to use a barrier repair moisturizer. These are three of my faves. Absolutely love these. They're a little bit more occlusive and they definitely repair my skin overnight. When I wake up in the morning, my skin is just soft, no irritation, no more redness. And today, since I'm heading out, I'm gonna be using a mineral sunscreen. I'm going to try the Kinship. This is the one I've been reaching for lately. I really like this. It gives a little bit of a glow to my skin and absolutely minimal, minimal white cast. And again, choosing a mineral sunscreen is gonna be less irritating. I'm putting a really thick layer of this on. It's gonna take a while to settle in, but the one thing you don't wanna do after a heavy exfoliation, like face shaving, dermaplaning, is expose your skin to UA. So you definitely want to get a nice thick layer of sunscreen on, especially if you're going to be out and about. And this will take a few minutes to soak in, but it really does have a very minimal white cast. I've been pretty impressed with this. While my sunscreen sets up, I want to talk about things you probably should avoid after shaving your face, especially if you have sensitive reactive skin. For me personally, I can't use microcurrent after I do an exfoliation like this. It just is too irritating. So I usually wait 24 to 48 hours before I come in with microcurrent. There's no real contraindication. It's just you don't want to overinflame the skin and irritate the skin. And for me personally, I have to wait a couple days before I start microcurrent up again. Another thing I wanna recommend that you avoid is a chemical exfoliant right after you shave your face because it's kind of like a double exfoliation. There's a very high potential that you're going to get a big reaction and your skin barrier is very sensitive right now. And the last thing you need to do is over irritate it with a chemical exfoliant. So those are just a couple things that I personally avoid after face shaving. I don't do any skincare devices. I just kind of put those aside for about 24 to 48 hours. I also don't do any exfoliation treatments. And I also don't use my retinoids at night because they just tend to irritate the skin. Obviously, you've done a deep exfoliation. Your skin is very sensitive. You just want to give your skin barrier a chance to recover. My sunscreen's all soaked in. I'm going to get ready for my day. Personally, I don't wear any complexion products after doing face shaving. It just tends to irritate my skin. It's completely personal preference. I hope you've enjoyed today's video on 101 beginner tips for face shaving or dermaplaning. Thanks very much for watching and wishing you all a skintastic day.